On this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to run electrical cable around corners of your wall. It might not as be as easy as you think, so stay tuned. Welcome to Fix This House. If you're new to the channel, please consider pressing the subscribe and notification bell so you can always be in tune on DIYs, how-to videos, and product reviews that I do within this channel. And just a quick disclaimer, my house codes, your house codes might be different, so always make sure you're always current and up to date with your current codes and you have the proper permits. Make sure you turn off the power from your circuit breaker if you're working with live electricity or any type of electrical. And if you're unsure and unconfident with working with any type of work, make sure you hire a certified and qualified professional. My full disclaimer is in the description down below. When you're running cable through your walls, you're gonna come across two situations. Maybe you're doing new construction and you have open studs, just like what you see on this mock-up right here. Or you might come across a situation where you already have drywall in place, just like this. We're going to go through the hard part first where there's already drywall installed on your wall. When you have drywall already installed on your walls, you have no choice but to cut a chunk or a piece of that drywall off so that you can have gain access to the studs behind them. I made a video on how to run cable through vertical studs. If you want to watch the full details of that video, I'll leave that on the corner right here. But I'll show you that on this video as well. I'll just give you a quick rundown on two methods on how you can cut through that drywall. First off, you want to find out where your studs are located. So what I like to use is this Franklin Stud Finder. Again, all the tools that I use on this video, I'll leave it in the description down below. Check out those links if you're interested on any products that I use. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to run your stud finder and you're going to figure out where that stud is. So you can see that in this corner right here, it lights up. Sometimes you're going to have studs that are, if I take this out, studs that are doubled, just like what you see here. Let me just put an extra stud on the corner for you friends for an example. This Franklin stud finder is great at pointing out if it is a double stud or not. And see that it does get thicker on the edge. So last time it had two lights, now it has three lights. And I would highly suggest that you figure out where those studs are first before doing any cutout work. So when you find out where in the corner of your wall you want to run this wires through, what I usually like to do is go about four inches on each side. I'm going to cut out that amount far from each corner because that's enough comfortable space for me. But it's sold up to you if you have double or triple studs, you might have to cut a little bit uh, larger square off or rectangle. It doesn't matter. It's the area that we're going to end up cutting out. And you're going to be using a jab saw, whichever tool you want to use. You can even use a utility knife or you may even have an oscillating tool that you want to use to cut that. I don't like using oscillating tool as much on these because it creates a lot of dust, but it's totally up to you. What I highly recommend friends is before you go and start cutting around your wall, you don't know what's behind there, whether there's wire, existing wires, piping behind there. So, what I like to use is this endoscope right here and I'll show you how to use this in a bit. But first we're going to have to drill a tiny hole. It doesn't matter. I highly suggest that you do on each side because it's a different surface area and you don't know what's running on each wall. So just gently drill a, a small hole through this drywall and you don't want to put too much pressure because so that'll defeat the purpose of this whole thing because you don't want to end up inadvertently drilling onto something. You just want to do it really light till you puncture through the drywall itself. So what's great about this endoscope is that it is Wi-Fi connected so you can um, connect it with your smartphone. All you got to do is turn it on and there's a light and a camera right there in the middle. So it's very flexible and it's like wire. You can form it to any way that you want. When you pair it with your iPhone, all you have to do is click and open the app. So now you can see me right there. Stick the endoscope through your wall and maneuver it up and down. And you can see behind there if there's any wires or any type of piping that will get in the way or you might end up cutting. This will definitely give you 100% and see what's going on behind the wall before you cut. Again, this product right here, I'll leave it in the description down below if you're interested. It's a very simple yet useful tool that I always keep in my toolbox and my go-to. So now that you have your cutout right there, you can finally go and bore a hole through that stud. I like to use a three quarter inch spade bit. It's going to be really hard for you to use a spade bit on this tiny hole right here. 
I wouldn't suggest doing that because if you do that, you're going to cut in an angle. You're not going to get the whole directly straight. You might end up having one using one of these plates um, because it's my, it might go past the five eight eighths mark from the edge of each stud. Technically going to be running cable anyways through here. You're going to have another open spot there for access. So what I like to use is I like to use this extension right here and I can extend finally my spade bit right like so. You can easily go from this opening right here and finally hit that middle mark of this stud that you're trying to do easy. Your typical two by four is three and a half wide. Okay, so that's three and a half. Half of that is inch and, inch and three quarters and that you mark the middle right there and that's where you're gonna bore your hole. So when you're boring a hole, you wanna make it as the same level as possible. You don't want one hole higher or lower than the other. You're gonna have a little bit of complications right there. You wanna meet it up just right. You can use a laser leveler, but that's not necessary. You can just use one of this level and you can find out where the the height is on each one. Okay. Even take your level, place it right against each one of this, make sure it's nice and leveled, and from there you can just mark out the same height. Easy as that. Inch and three quarters from the middle of this stud. Inch and three quarters is right there, okay? Mark it to where you marked it right there. And now we're gonna bore in the next one. Sometimes you have triple, double stud. It doesn't matter. You're just gonna drill right through them just like what we did right through there. And if you did it right and it's nice and leveled, see how each hole is nice in the same level. One's not lower than the other because if you do that, you're gonna have a little bit of difficulty. What you're gonna do is you're gonna try to bend this. You don't wanna bend your wire 90 degree just like this. As much as possible, you don't wanna kink your wire like that because bending it a sharp 90 degree like that, that's not good for your wire. That will create heat later on in the long run, a pinch, and it's not good. You wanna have a nice um, arch like so. I'm gonna show you three methods on how to do this. Um, let's say that you're running your cable through another stud and continuing right so. Uh, what I suggest is that you're gonna pull that wire and get enough slack just like this. A nice question mark loop. Okay, it's good to have enough slack so that you can move the cable around because not having enough slack will be really, really hard for you, okay? It's gonna be really stiff. Right when you have that question mark loop, just feed it through the first hole and then you're gonna, this is where you're just gonna go and play around, um, just trying to hit that other hole. This is actually a difficult bit because only one stud per each side. If this was three studs at the same time, it's easier because now you have a channel for the wire to actually go and feed through. This one is a little bit of a trial and error because now you have, because you have a hollow void behind each stud and now you're gonna you're trying to figure out if it's gonna hit through each side or not. So this is actually a lot harder. So hopefully you have double or triple studs. You're gonna go back and straighten out the wire. Now you can feed it through and continue on. Just like that. It's very easy to do. It just takes a lot of patience. And this is what I was talking to you about. Let me take my camera out and take you behind what's going on here. So this from my mock-up, you can see that the cable runs through right there. You don't want a sharp 90 degree turn because that will create a pinch on your, your cable. You don't want that. But if there was like three more studs here and three more studs build up there, you have a nice solid tunnel for that to wire through. If you are having trouble fishing out wire, you can always use your fish tape, run it through there, and then right when you go, connect it to the end of that fish tape and you can pull that cable right through using this fish tape as well. Again, all the products that I use in this video and all the tools, I'll leave it in the description down below. Make sure you check those links out. Something that's, uh, I don't know, leave it in the comment section down below if you prefer this method or the notching method. Some people would notch around this stud right here. So notching means that they're gonna cut a piece 
of um, wood out of each edge. Again, if you want to learn about notching and boring and the requirements and the codes, again, check out that link on this top right here. I made a separate video on the do's and don'ts and the requirements when notching around studs and load bearing and non load bearing walls. But I don't prefer notching. Some people might do that when they notch and they don't have to drill bore right through. What you're gonna have to do with notching is you're gonna end up bending the wire in a 90 degree like that so that you can um, feed it right through. Again, if you do notch it deep enough, you might not end up bending it like that. You might get away with just having a nice curve like so, which I still don't like because now you have to use a steel plate to go over that. But let me know in the comment section down below which you prefer. Do you bore hole through your studs or do you notch? Let me know. I want to know your comments down below. Thank you so much for tuning in once again. If you found big value to this video, please hit that big thumbs up. Press the subscribe and notification bell. And like what I mentioned, I like to show real life scenario because 90% of the time, most of us DIYers like to go through with already drywall installed and not open like this new construction. And I like to show you guys in real time in real life scenarios, just like what I show you onto this mock-up that I made. Once again, friends, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Jay from Fix This House. I'll see you friends on the next one.